What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher from The Duran, and I'm here with Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of The Duran. And today we're going to be talking about Maria Butina. Maria Butina, Alexander, many people may have heard of her. Many people may not, but they're going to soon find out about her. Explain to us who Maria Butina is, why all of a sudden she's been thrust into the, into the limelight, what's, what's the, what are the circumstances behind her story, what's fact, what's fiction. Uh, Alexander, have at it. Well, first of all, who is she? She is a very attractive uh, uh, Russian girl of 29 who likes guns. <laughs> I think that's the first thing to say about her. Um, in, the, in Russia itself, um, she's actually quite a well-known person because she is a big supporter in Russia of uh, um, an equivalent in Russia to the Second Amendment. She, she believes that people should have freedom to own guns in Russia just as they do in the United States. In, in Russia, gun control laws are much stricter than they are in the U.S., um, Russians generally are allowed to have hunting rifles and such things, but they're not allowed to have handguns, for example, as they are in the U.S. Butina thinks they should. And she's a pretty big campaigner for this, and she's been heavily involved, and she's pretty well known in Russia for advocating these ideas. Now, she's also somebody who is actually quite pro-American. Uh, that's how Russians perceive her. Some time ago, she went to live in the U.S., um, p partly because uh, it's a place that she seems to like. Um, she's got involved with various people in the NRA, which, given her interest in guns, perhaps isn't surprising. Um, and um, she's uh, developed a relationship with one of them. Now, this person is now believed by the FBI to be a Russian spy, and she has just essentially been arrested on that basis. And the idea seems to be that she is working for the Kremlin to infiltrate the NRA. Not entirely clear why, she, why the Kremlin would want to infiltrate the NRA. <laughs> yeah. but, but supposedly she's been asked to do that using her considerable charms. And supposedly she's offered sex in order to achieve this. Um, all, all as part of some devious Kremlin plot to presumably uh, bring the, uh, the NRA round, one of the most patriotic and nationalist institutions in the United States, and to bring it under the Kremlin's thumb. Um, all I can say <laughs> about that is that I find that an absolutely flaky theory. Um, it doesn't make any kind of sense to me. And if you look at the indictments that have been put together, um, they don't really seem to provide much or indeed any evidence for that. And the official who is supposed to be um, her controller, her, 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 her Russian intelligence um, you know, mastermind controller, who is a man called Torshin, who is already pretty well known in Russia, um, is a fairly uh, well-known sort of middle-ranking politician in Russia, and is an official of the Central Bank of Russia, which, again, does not point to him having any connection with the intelligence services, which in Russia nobody seems to think uh, is the case. So, I mean, the whole thing looks, to me, you know, quite incredibly far-fetched. But you ask me who she is, who Bettina is, and I've tried to explain it. Now, she was arrested under the FARA Act. Um, explain to us a little bit of the, about the FARA Act. And I also want to preface it by saying, if the FBI started arresting people uh, based on the FARA Act, you probably have half of D.C. in prison. So explain to us a little why they arrested her. Explain to us a little of the FARA Act and explain why it's pretty much BS, the reasons that they're claiming to, to keep her in a, in a prison cell. Right. I mean, the FARA Act is, is, is a piece of legislation that goes back many years in the United States, which says that if you are the agent of a foreign power, of a foreign country, and that doesn't necessarily mean a spy, by the way, but it means if you're acting in the United States, as say a lobbyist on behalf of a foreign power, you have to register as what is known as a foreign agent 
under certain uh, rules and guidelines so that the fact that you're an agent of a foreign power I is actually um, um, a publicized fact. Now, the problem with Butina is that she didn't uh, register as a foreign agent. And the U.S. authorities are saying, actually, she was acting on Russia's behalf because she is a spy acting for the Russian intelligence agencies. So even though she didn't actually carry out any espionage, because they can't prove that she did carry out espionage, I mean, you know, chatting up people in the NRA and perhaps even sleeping with them isn't espionage. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they nonetheless say that she did all of this uh, uh, on behalf of Mother Russia, and so she should have registered as a foreign agent, but she didn't do so, and that's what she's been prosecuted for. Now, I have to say, I don't think that adds up at all in Butina's case, because I don't really think that the evidence that she was acting on behalf of the Russian authorities, or the Russian state, uh, at the moment looks to me at all good. I mean, it seems to me that she had an agenda, as I said, to provoke gun rights in Russia, and that, I mean, you know, unless that is a very elaborate cover story indeed, and if you know about her activities in Russia, you would have, you would realize how elaborate a, a cover story that is, because, I mean, she's pursued this thing in Russia on a very big scale, but, you know, unless that is some sort of cover story, uh, then, as I said, I mean, it, the whole idea that she was acting for the Russian state as opposed to individually to promote something that she personally believes in really just doesn't make much sense to me. Now, uh, as for Farah, you are absolutely right. The whole system of government in the United States revolves around lobbying. And mm -hmm. there is a huge amount right. of lobbying for companies, for businesses, and for foreign governments. Lots of foreign governments do it. The Russians, as a matter of fact, barely do it at all. But the Saudis do on a gigantic scale. And the Israelis do on an absolutely humongous scale. And if everybody who is involved, uh, 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 um, who takes, you know, uh, 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 who works for the Israelis and the Saudis, and indeed the British, who are also pretty heavily involved in these things. If everybody who in Washington who worked for these countries um, um, was in fact uh, 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 registered as an agent, I mean, the, the, the registrations would uh, uh, reach up to, 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 you know, to the sky. They barely are. And of course, nothing is being done to them. And if they were being prosecuted for it, there wouldn't be enough prisons in America to hold them. And uh, there wouldn't be anybody left in America to run the government because the entire uh, Congress <laughs> and uh, most of the people who work for the Congress are to a greater or lesser extent involved in all of this. So, I mean, it is a completely crazy uh, law which is pursued, uh, uh, well, maybe not, maybe not such a crazy law, but it is a law that is uh, 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 largely ignored except, it seems, uh, when it means coming after a young Russian woman um, at a time when relations between the U.S. and Russia are very bad, and the U.S. authorities, who can't pin anything uh, of an espionage nature on her, need to find some sort of law, dust out some sort of law, in order to nab her and put her before a court as part of the anti-Russian campaign which we are seeing. That's exactly, by, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's they can't find anything related to espionage, and so they pull out this FARA Act, and this FARA Act is, is, is just basically something that if, if, if she was working for the Saudis and <laughs> the, the Saudis have all the politicians in their pocket, there would be no way in hell they would pursue her because the Saudis have every, every congressman, every congresswoman paid for and bought out. And Absolutely. so, I mean, it's, and it's, it's ludicrous. Fun. And not just Congress, but I mean, you know, there's, there's armies of professional lobbyists in Washington. There's a huge industry around this. Uh, everybody knows it, too, by the way. I mean, you know, yeah. th these people are all heavily involved in this sort of thing. And of course, as I said, the FBI uh, knows this perfectly well. Uh, everybody in Congress knows this. Everybody in the government knows this. As I said, nobody comes after these people. But this was a convenient law. 
in which to nab a Russian woman and to build a spy story around it. And of course, you know, you, you, you throw in espionage, even though, as I said, there is no evidence of espionage. Yeah. And you throw in a bit of sex, because she's a pretty girl. And as I said, you have a James Bond thriller, uh, uh, which uh, you can use. And of course, it promotes more um, anti-Russian feeling at a time when anti-Russian feeling is in, in extraordinarily high and when there are all kinds of allegations about how the Russians are supposed to be trying to undermine the United States and it makes any kind of connection between the United, uh, Russia and any American look suspicious and of course given that the NRA is overwhelmingly a Republican institution and a conservative and a right there you institution go. which supports Donald Trump it's another way by uh, uh, the deep state, if you like, of having a go at, con uh, 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 at, uh, at Republicans, conservatives, and supporters of Donald Trump and Donald Trump himself. So would you say that if this is the case of a Russian girl being at the, at the wrong place at the wrong time, um, and she just kind of got engulfed into this whole Russia hysteria, Russia collusion, deep state narrative that's playing out, just chalk it up to bad luck on Maria Putina's part? Or do you think that the FBI is going to actually keep her in prison, uh, maybe use her as some sort of swap with another spy? I don't know how, how these things work. What's, what do you think the end game for Maria is? Well, Are they just going to release her and say, you know what, wrong place, wrong time now, now get back to Russia? Or do you think they're going to keep her, you know, as, well, as, as a negotiating chip? Well, to answer your first question, I do think that she's a Russian girl in the wrong place at the wrong time. I think that is exactly what's happened. As I said, I come back to what I said. There's no evidence that she's, commit that she's carried out espionage and, frankly, barely any evidence. I mean, no real evidence that she was acting on behalf of the Russian state or the Russian government. So, I mean, that is exactly how it looks. And it's important to stress that she herself is vigorously denying these charges. She is defending herself, and she's got American lawyers who are defending her. So, uh, I mean, at the moment, she's putting up a spirited fight on her behalf. Now, as to what will happen, I have to say this, um, the trend in cases involving Russians in the United States at the moment is very bad. Um, I, I'm afraid, despite the fight that she's putting up, I, I personally think that there is a strong possibility, however weak the case against her is, that she will end up being convicted and sent to prison. And there's even talk of a 15-year sentence, which seems wow. to me unbelievably disproportionate, given how little she's actually done and how innocuous that is. Now, will there be a, a spy swap? Um, a few years ago, that might have been the case. The Russians might be reluctant to swap her for people of their own if she really isn't a spy. But mm -hmm. given the outcry there's likely to be in Russia, who knows, they might be prepared to do that. But even to talk of a spy swap at this time, given how bad relations have become between the United States and Russia, is problematic. And it may be very difficult to arrange that, much more difficult than it was when the uh, rather different, the very different Anna Chapman case Anna Chapman, um, arose yeah. some years ago. Anna Chapman was a spy. I, I mean, the Russians have never mm -hmm. denied it. Um, as I said, um, um, Butina doesn't seem to be a, a spy. I mean, the Russians are, are saying she is not a spy. She is saying she is not a spy. But as I said, they were, it was possible to do spy swaps in Anna Chapman's day. That it may be much harder now. Mm -hmm. Finally, Alexander, how do you think Russia is going to navigate this with uh, with Maria? Do you think they're, they're, they're going to let this play out in American court? Do you think they're going to do some sort of move in, in, in reciprocity, um, maybe asymmetric in accordance with what the U.S. has done by, you know, pulling a, a Russian citizen who's obviously, it appears she's not a spy. She was just in the U.S., you know, going about her business. So maybe they'll do the same. In Russia, I mean, how, how does Russia, how is Russia going to navigate this, this mini crisis right now? Yeah, I mean, the, the Russians do care a lot about their people. I think that's the thing one ought to say. And I mean, when I say just the Russians, I don't just mean the Russian state and the Russian authorities. 
these cases do get a lot of publicity in Russia. Russian newspapers are full of them. The families write about them. There are campaigns on behalf of these people. And there is sometimes criticism of the Russian authorities if it seems that they're not doing enough. So already the Russians have sent their diplomats and they've spoken to uh, Maria Butina in prison. And they're doing what they can to support her. And I think they will try and look for ways to help her. And in time, that might be some kind of a swap. Who knows? Or it may be that there will be other kinds of diplomatic action taken. But, of course, it's not easy um, in a situation like this, given the hysteria in the US at the moment. In time, maybe they'll be able to arrange some sort of deal, probably involving lots of other things, maybe involving other people too to try and, and bring her back from the US. But the Russians have been trying it with various other Russians who have ended up in American prisons, and they found it very difficult to get them back at the moment. But, you know, they won't give up. I, of that, I am sure. Mm -hmm. And it's an incredible story, actually. I mean, it's, 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 it's well, astonishing. To my, mind, to my mind, what it also shows, actually, is the extent to which uh, uh, so much of American politics now is following the Hollywood movies. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, no, I mean, there is there is a kind of Hollywood movie quality to this issue of Maria Butina. This idea that she's some sort of I mean, there, there, there was a film a few a short while ago called Red Sparrow, right? About a Russian sex spy, a pretty Russian sex spy, who sent to the West uh, in the Soviet times to infiltrate the West. And, uh, you know, one sometimes gets the sense that far too many people in Washington are, are, are watching these movies and, are, 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 and that, you know, a, a, a fact is starting to follow fiction in some yeah. ways. Uh, and I, I, I do get that impression sometimes with a lot of the things that in the U.S. are being said about Russia and about individual Russians. And, I mean, people are not seeing this as the case of a solitary Russian, a young Russian woman who has certain ideas of her own and is lead, leading her own life. And actually, from everything that she said, um, is actually somebody who has a high opinion of the United States. Right. I mean, as I said, she wants Russia to become, in some ways, more like the United States. Instead of seeing that, what they see instead is a pretty young Russian woman who, as I said, is uh, ob that's obviously sinister in itself, and at the same time, it's a further way, as I said before, for, for attacking uh, uh, Russia and also for attacking the Republicans and Donald Trump. And, and, the, NR and, the, and the NRA things, and, 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 and Middle and, America and, and, all these things and the flyover states, seem yeah. To, seem to be, uh, seem to be uh, more important. And as I said, you create a bad spy film out of it. Yeah, it's, it seems like the deep state and, and Hollywood have the same script writers. Well, they do. Well, they do. I mean, I, 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 there's any doubt about it. I mean, uh, I, I mean, look at ho look at how all this sort of Hollywood has uh, uh, allied itself almost entirely with the deep state uh, yeah. uh, uh, on the Trump thing. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it's really really remarkable actually. Yeah, but it's it's a shame to think that if if you know she was just in the U.S. because she loves being in the U.S. She loves guns. She's Engage with the NRA, and now she could be in prison for for ten to fifteen years just just because she's Russian, not for anything else, well, just exactly. because she's Russian. Well, exactly. Well, exactly. It's, I mean, it's, it's extremely disturbing, and frankly, I mean, this is the other thing we we uh, we haven't touched on yet, but we've touched it on other places. It, it's really really bizarre that these people who talk about political correctness, who are all the time uh, uh, hammering on about the rights of minorities, about anti-racism, right. about anti-Semitism, about you name it. When it comes to Russians, they see Russians as fair game. And yeah. I mean, that really does tell you an awful lot about these people uh, 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 and the sort of uh, uh, mentalities that they have. Yeah, what, one might even venture to call these people racists. I, I, I don't have any hesitation calling them racists. Yeah. I think there you go. in some cases, I mean, I think, I think their Russophobia is frankly racist, and I think it should yeah. be called that. And it should be called that. Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant, thank you very much for a fascinating discussion on Maria Butina. Let's hope that uh, she gets out and she gets back home to Russia, because this is just plain and pure silliness.
and, and she's a she's a human being at the end of the day. You know, she should absolutely. not be going to prison well, for ten to fifteen and we, years. And we should we should, we should not forget that's absolutely that's absolutely wrong. Yeah, guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Also, click on the notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And visit the Duran shop. Help support the Duran. Alexander Mercurius, editor in chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Until next time, take care.